So I was thinking that we would go through some of um, the late great Make Good Rakes material because I feel like he was a bit of a archaeologist of guitar. Like he was just like digging and digging and digging and finding all these little bits of wisdom. What Make Goodrick did is he created a thing called the Almanac for Guitar Players. And just to put it really simply, just to dive in, the concept is to go up the scale and down the inversions or down the scale and up the inversions. And um, that can mean a few different things. It'd be like C, D minor, D minor. So this is this would be up the scale, scale stepwise, like one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, three chord. And that's one way to go up the scale. But then he also says, well, you can go up the scale in, let's say, thirds. You could go like C to E minor, and then a third up to G to B diminish, to D minor, to F, to A, A minor, and then back up to C. And so these are, you know, patterns that we can use that are beautiful progressions. Like when I play that, it's like, huh, this could be a song. It's actually kind of nice. Like we can hear that a lot, a lot. And so Mick will say, these are beautiful progressions. These are just patterns that we can use. Now, not only are we going to practice the patterns, but let's now voice lead through these patterns. So if I were to go from C, as an example, from C to E minor, maybe um, it's more practical to go, right? And, uh, so this is just changing one note, right? And then if I go to G, I could do my, so I'm changing one note. And then when I go to um, B diminished, so every time I'm changing a chord in thirds, rather than jumping to these root positions, I'm just changing one note at a time. Um, to G. So it sounds really beautiful and it's just a way to really um, help us understand what voice leading is. If the theory part of it or knowing what it is, is it distracting? Just forget it, don't worry about it. Just play the sounds and memorize these shapes. Um, but if, you know, if you are interested in knowing why this all works, then you can start to observe what's actually going on. So let's just review playing that those root positions where we're going to do G on, the, on um, G root position major and then A minor, E minor, C major, D major, E minor, F diminished. And G. Okay, so now we're gonna basically try to play A minor, um, but lower on the fretboard. So um, my my brain says, okay, I have a root on my fifth string, and so that shows me that my second inversion is available. So what that looks like, you don't have to listen to that if that doesn't make sense to you. Just what that looks like is twelfth fret, um, tenth fret, and What's that? 14th fret. Then, then when we go to B, so now we're looking for a B minor. So I'll just show you what my brain does. My brain says, here's my B. And I know that from here I have a first inversion. So then, so then my first inversion looks like 10th fret, 9th fret, and 13th fret. And now C root position. Okay, so now we have um, a D to play. So does anyone know where this D is that we're going to play? Okay, so this is going to be a second position. So this is our, our D, um, D triad. So, so far we have... D. And now our E is going to be another first inversion. Let's just finish off this cycle. This is our F sharp root position. Now we're going to jump up to, um, we're going to jump up the octave for the next cycle. So I'm going to um, close this and um, play the whole thing through. So I mean, whatever you can keep up with, 
uh, keep up with. And if if all you've got is the root positions, then just play that along with me. It's going to sound um, harmonious anyway. One, two. Now we're going to switch to A minor. One, two. Now we switch to B minor. Switch to root position C. Minor. 